Christian church, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Well, my text is uh, anointed for battle. And I'm coming out of First Samuel, story of Saul and David and Goliath. Now, let me um, take you back a little bit for the, um, the start of things with Saul. He, um, he wasn't chosen of God initially. He was the first king of Israel, but uh, the people of Israel, they looked around and they didn't want any more judges, and Samuel was the judge, and he had retired, and they wanted a king because they saw the other regions they all had kings so they wanted something similar but it wasn't God's heart but God gave them the desire of their heart and gave them Saul but uh, God was displeased with Saul because of his disobedience and it says that the anointing had left Saul and he was seeking it was seek, uh, they, they needed someone else, and uh, David was the youngest of a bunch of brothers. God told Samuel to anoint David. Uh, just as in a natural war, there's a prepara preparation is key, so it is with spiritual things. Oh, we have to pray and fast, and uh, among other things, as God instructs. And uh, you'll find favor in high places during the anointing preparation. Now David was in Saul's court because he had found favor with Saul. And um, there was a festival, and this is the thing, the way God works. S Samuel has to anoint David, but David is working for Saul, who is the king, not knowing that Samuel is anointing David to become king. And Saul, he had to explain to Saul that David couldn't be in his court because he had to go to a festival that uh, a sacrifice were being given to the people in Israel. And everyone had to be there. So Samuel, so uh, Jonathan, who is uh, Saul's son, made excuses so that David could be there. And uh, as with man, it is only natural to the firstborn, all the blessings go. So Samuel is there to anoint David and all of his older brothers, the, the, um, the father Jesse keeps pushing in front of them. Um, how about this one? How about that one? And God is saying no. This is not the one that I want to anoint. And David, they had to send for David because he was in Saul's court. So David left Saul's court and made, Jonathan made excuses for David so that he can be there at, the there at the festival so that he can get anointed. Now David is anointed and it's said that an evil spirit from the Lord was on Saul, King Saul. Now, God does not do evil. What happened was, because the anointed had left off of Saul, he was fair game for the enemy. And uh, the devil roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And as the anointed left Saul, a, uh, yeah, he opened them up. A troubling spirit came and started to trouble Saul. So Saul, not knowing what to do, he speak to his servant. His servant said, there is a, there is a young guy that, uh, that plays the harp very well. God is setting up David in Saul's court, un unknown to Saul. And it's in this process, the process of the anointing that things happen behind the scenes that we don't expect looking at them from our natural eyes. 
And, you know, you will find favor in high places during the anointing process. Now, I can use Pastor for an example. When he was going through the legal problems, the, there was a divine appointment that someone came into our place of business unbeknownst to anyone and that person was representing the foremost authority on the things in our field and that foremost authority was that same person that that person was a doctor who teach doctors the top you can't get any higher than that and that person was the one who said I will rep I will be a speaker for you. I will I will go and I will I will represent on your behalf. So God is always setting up things and we don't see it with our natural eyes. David found favor with Saul. Now during this process that David was in Saul's court, he was the only one who can play the harp very well. And, and when he played, the evil spirit left Saul. So, so he found favor in Saul's eyes. Not knowing that he is going to be Saul's replacement. You know, we say, you know, sometimes God has a sense of humor. The, the way he does things, the way he sets things up. It's, it's amazing and it's, it's, it's wonderful to see. But if David had known everything that was going to be happening... His natural mind, his natural would, would have kicked in and he would have missed the things that God had for him. So not everything in God gives an explanation because it takes no explanation with faith. First comes faith and after faith comes the explanation after you looking back on things and seeing all the things that unfold. Oh, uh, People are expect, people's expectation based on familiarity does not stop God's anointing in your life. Now, his brothers, they all, they all thought that they were going to be, you know, above him. Even Goliath did. Of course, Goliath said, who is this? Am I a dog that you should send this young kid out to me? You see, David's brothers were familiar with him. They knew him, and they knew that when he spoke, he, 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 it seems like he was boasting. But David was not boasting. He had the anointing on him, and he spoke with holy boldness. He spoke from a level of expecting, expecting God to move in his life. So he had that boldness. And it was misunderstood for him being proud, he being boastful, but no, it took that in order to get Goliath's attention, and it also took that to get Saul's attention. Because there was, it came to a point where Saul, no one, no one from the Israelites' army would go out and fight, because they were all terrified of Goliath. And Goliath's past experiences with war knew in his natural mind that he can defeat anyone that, that came forward from, his, from the Israel's army. But David was not anyone. David had the anointing of God. He had the expectation. He had the power. He had the ability. He had the strength. And he had the vision of defeating Goliath. You see, things are first spiritual before they're physical. And Goliath did not grasp that nor did anyone else in uh, Saul didn't grasp it because Saul's anointing had left him so he was carnally thinking he couldn't see it he tried to offer David his armor because David was Saul's armor bearer you know um, you can put my armor on but the armor that Saul used was not anointed for David so sometimes one person's anointing is not the other person's anointing you cannot come behind someone and do the same things that they do and expect the same results God moves differently 
he he moves upon the person who he created everything is unique each anointing is uniquely fit towards that specific person so these these are things that Saul didn't know so he offered the armor and David realized that it wasn't proven for him there was no way that he can Saul was a man of high stat of tall tallness he was big David was small David is his armor and his ability his things couldn't David can use that but what David could use was the stones that was anointed and you look at you look at this you look at the natural things in anyone's hands and it's nothing but when God moves in a supernatural way the natural things become supernatural with the anointing on it and Goliath mocked and David said who is this uncircumcised uncircumcised Philistine that he defied that he should defy the armies of the living God you see Goliath's God and the God that they serve were all dead they, 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 there was no life there was nothing they were making sacrifices to wooden carvings but we serve a God who is alive who is looking out for our behalf who is seeking to bless us and once the anointing is on someone there is nothing there were no hordes of hell there is nothing that come against it that can succeed no weapon form against it shall prosper so David kindly excused himself from Saul and uh, did his thing he got his stones and he defeated Goliath but in order for David to defeat Goliath he had to remember past things God had served God was had moved in a miraculous way in his life in the past he had defeated a lion he had defeated a bear and he knows that it is the same God that is moving right now in his situation that will give him the victory over Goliath so David didn't have fear David had peace and this is the thing when you're going through a battle the one makes the difference between focusing on everything that's external the enemy gives external things to try to take us off of our game to keep us from focusing on God all he can do is deal in the natural but God will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding to go through the battle and to be victorious in the battle because if you are focusing on everything else how can you be focusing on the voice of God and getting direction and instructions from him and how to handle the situation because not every situation is the same and in a battle the enemy can appear threatening he can use all different things at his disposal as he does in everyone's life or he tries to but when we have the anointing of God and everything that is in the high places seated in Christ Jesus there is no way that the enemy can be victorious in our lives we just have to keep focusing on the one who has been there who has defeated him and who has all power over him the enemy is under our feet sickness disease everything that the enemy throws at us is under our feet we just have to walk in it we must first see it in the see it in the spiritual realm believe it with God that when two or more touching and agreeing whatever is bound on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever is loose on earth will be loose in heaven so victory victory is a must victory is is an it, it's inevitable we are the ones that stop our own victory in our lives when we focus on the things happening around us instead of focusing on the one who control the things and as far as Saul goes he uh, he well let me backtrack a little bit with David what 
what, what gave David the advantage too also was that he was hearing ch chatter among the ranks that whoever defeated Goliath would have riches, they would get to marry Saul's daughter, <laughs> and their family would be free from all the things that enslaved the people in Israel. And that was motivation together with God's anointing and power to have David go out and be victorious over Goliath. And just as David is victorious over Goliath, any battles that come up in our lives, we can be victorious too. All we have to do is focus on God, focus on Jesus who is making intercession for us at the right hand of God and with the strength and the power that's given to us through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can defeat anything, anytime, anywhere. Also, I want to, there's a parallel between with Jesus and David. Now, when David had that righteous indignation against Goliath, it's the same way that Jesus had the righteous indignation against the people in the temple that were the money changers that were selling things. And also, with Jesus, the Pharisees and the scribes couldn't believe who, you know, what was happening because they kept saying, oh, this is the carpenter's son. Isn't this Joseph's son? Isn't this the carpenter's son? We, you know, we knew him from birth. When people are familiar with you, they would put things on you that's limited, that's based on their knowledge of you. But the anointing can supersede all of those things. The anointing can take someone out of whatever mess that they're in and elevate them and bring them into courts. And they would receive favor and blessings and knowledge. There is nothing more powerful than being in the favor and the right will of God. For our tithes. Also, with, uh, with tithes, there is a blessing. It, you know, we, 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 get, we get to give back 10% of everything that God has given us, which is, you know, I mean, it's all God's. And it's not always in a monetary, it's, it's not always monetary in return. God would give you favor. He would rebuke the devourer. He would strengthen your lives. He would intercede on your behalf with, in, your, in your family's life. And he is able to give you the victory no matter where you are in things. And all it takes is the faith to step out and let God be a blessing in your life.